no matter if you consider yourself a fan of strategy games and no matter if you even have a GBA, you really ought to look into Advance Wars 2. It's the latest game from Intelligent Systems and Nintendo and the sequel uh, to 2001's Advance Wars, which w really is the definitive sleeper hit for the GBA. It just had a really unique style to it and just was exceptionally well designed, so uh, many GBA owners still play Advance Wars to this day, uh, and, and this sequel you know, arrives at a time when uh, many of them uh, really couldn't wait any longer for a game like this. Uh, they, they just want more uh, of, of all that was great about the first game, and, and that's exactly what Ad Advance Wars 2 delivers. Advance Wars 2 begs the question, how do you take a game that's already exceptionally good and, and arguably nearly flawless to begin with and make it even better? The answer is by, by being very, very careful about it. Advance Wars 2, at a glance, uh, seems like kind of a rehash of the first one. It reuses uh, many of the same graphics and many of the same sound effects. Uh, all the old characters from the first game are back. Things like that. Um, and, and the gameplay is fundamentally identical also. In fact, there's only one new unit in the game. So all that you know, makes it seem like, well, they're just uh, dishing out a bunch of new Advance Wars levels and packaging it as a sequel. But that turns out to not be the case. There are actually some subtle but important changes in the sequel that really revitalize the gameplay of the sequel and, and uh, make it more complex, uh, make it more entertaining, make it uh, fundamentally better. Uh, so even though you know, Advance Wars 2 lacks the innovation of its predecessor, it's certainly you know, at least as great of a game and, and is, is just perfect for anyone who liked the first game or anyone who might have missed out. Just like in the first game, in Advance Wars 2, you, you assume the role of various commanding officers or COs and have at it against other COs on these kind of tactical maps. Uh, you take turns with the opponent, moving your units around, uh, capturing territories, uh, attacking your enemies, things like that, uh, positioning your forces strategically. So if you've ever played any turn-based strategy game before, this will be uh, fairly familiar territory for you. One of the key differences in Advance Wars 2 is that there are now many more COs to choose from. In the original game's campaign, you only played as the Orange Star Army, so you only had really three different COs to choose from, and you fought against many others. You could unlock the other COs for use, for use in the game's skirmish mode, but they didn't figure as prominently into the game. But the plot of Advance Wars 2 pits all the old COs and some new ones against a common opponent, which is the Black Hole Army, uh, which, which also returns from the first game. Uh, so over the course of the game's campaign, you'll get to play as uh, pretty much all the old COs from the first game, as well as some new ones. Uh, the thing about the COs is that even though they have access to exactly the, the same units as all the other COs do, they each have unique properties and, and uh, particular special abilities. In the first game, each CO had a unique special power, and, and now they each have two. They, they have like a second tier of, of superpowers that you can charge up uh, just by uh, biding your time for even longer, and it can really change the course of a battle if you use it correctly. The one new unit in Advance Wars 2 is called the Neo Tank. It's like this big spider-like heavy tank. Um, it, it's, it's pretty cool, but at the same time, uh, you know, at a glance, you might be kind of disappointed that there's only one new unit in the whole game. That's really because there, there wasn't much room really to add that much more stuff uh, to Advance Wars 2 because the original game had, had such a broad lineup of units to begin with. So the addition of the one new tank uh, adds, adds, a cool, uh, adds a cool new element to the ground game. The Neo Tank's only real disadvantage is that it costs a lot. Uh, but other than that, the game was so meticulously well balanced to begin with that it's really a good thing that intelligent systems didn't mess around that much and, and uh, mess with a formula that worked so well. The campaign missions are also better in Advance Wars 2 than in the first game. You often have as many as four different ones to choose from and uh, they, they start off pretty easy but they really become quite challenging. The AI is better than before and you'll often get to control more than one CO during a skirmish so you'll really have to think and, and there are still uh, very different types of maps so in, in some scenarios you might have just a limited number of units to choose from so you really uh, have to make sure you're getting the most mileage out of each one. But it has this great tutorial built right into the first few missions that uh, will ease you right in even if you've never played another uh, strategy game before this. If you've played the original Advance Wars absolutely to death, it's possible that the sequel won't last you quite as long, but even still, you're likely to find that the, all the new features uh, combine to, to make the sequel uh, every bit as interesting as the first game. 
So what else is there to say? This is this is really just one of one of the best GBA games yet. Um, it's it's every bit as good and in many ways better than its predecessor. And um, again, you know, don't be put off by it being a game about war or it being a turn-based strategy game or anything like that. If you just give it a chance, uh, you're more than likely to really really enjoy it. And if you've played the first Advance Wars, then you know exactly what I'm talking about.